Hi everyone. Buenos días, buenas tardes. Thank you so much for joining us today and a special thank you for everybody that joined yesterday's webinar as well. Um, as all of you know, today we will be speaking uh, with two universities, the University of Bristol and the University of Wolverhampton. Uh, before starting the presentation, uh, where I'll be walking you through the general conditions of the scholarship, where I want to share with you a video that we have produced here in the Americas to uh, boost and, and give enthusiasm to everybody that wants to apply to our scholarship. Si eres mujer, si vos es mujer, si eres madre, si vos es mujer. Si eres hija, si eres hermana, si eres valiente, si vos eres inteligente y auténtica, si eres perseverante, si eres apasionada, si eres rebelde, si te gustan los retos, si vos quebras los estereotipos, si eres de las que persiguen sus sueños hasta cumplirlos, si eres de Colombia, de México, de Brasil, de Cuba, si eres de Perú, de Argentina, si você é da Jamaica ou de Venezuela, si você é pesquisadora, si eres ingeniera, si lo tuyo es la tecnología, si você gosta de ciencias, o los números, if you speak English, o estás estudiando para mejorar tu nivel en este idioma, si quieres estudiar una maestría, mas no tienes recursos para eso, this message is for you, esta invitación es para ti, aplica a las becas para mujeres en STEM del British Council, aplique para las bolsas del British Council para mujeres en la área de STEM, date la oportunidad de viajar, conocer, aprender, de co-crear, trocar ideas, contribuir, emprender, crear lazos, de liderar, Eu tive a oportunidade de estudar no Reino Unido. And now, I invite you to take this opportunity. E lá você terá uma experiência inesquecível. Se eu pude fazê-lo, tu podes fazê-lo também. Hoje é o dia. Sem mais desculpas. Sigue. Continua. Avança. Aplica. Aplique. Aplica. Aplica. Inscreva-se. Tienes até finales de março. Cheque o site do British Council para mais detalhes. Oh, fantastic. I hope you liked the video. Um, as I was mentioning before, I'm going to walk you through the scholarship requirements for all of you to apply. And if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the text box. And we will be addressing all questions at the end uh, of all the three presentations that you will be seeing today. So first of all, um, what is uh, the British Council Scholarships for Women in STEM. Um, this scholarship is uh, going is available in uh, three regions. Slide, please. It's available in three regions, and it is um, the Americas, South Asia, and East Asia. And it will be giving out over a hundred scholarships throughout these regions. Uh, this scholarship is is um, possible thanks to the partnership that we as British Council have developed together with 19 top universities from the UK. And what are we looking for? We're looking for enthusiastic women that have already done an undergrad in STEM subjects and that are looking to improve their career and um, be able to specialize in the area that they are passionate about. Um, through a master's degree in the UK. Slide, please. Um, although we are available in several countries, this presentation today is going to be specifically for the countries in the Americas. Slide, please. 
Um, as I was mentioning before, this is an extremely um, generous uh, scholarship. Um, it not only does it cover tuition fees, but it also has a stipend for up to 15 months to those women that have been uh, given uh, the opportunity of having this scholarship. Um, we will be covering uh, the plane ticket, for instance, to be able to visit the UK as well. Um, it will also be able to cover uh, any exams that you would be able to, you would have to give such as an IELTS or similar once you are um, short noted, once you, are, you have been chosen, you will be able to, to pay with the, with the scholarship any kind of exams. Um, this will also support finance for your passport and visa if you are required to, to uh, if you need one to visit the UK. Um, and also for those women that don't have um, the level of English needed uh, to just make the cut, and need a little bit of a course. Uh, universities are also offering a pre-sessional English course to up to 10 weeks to be able to make um, the English requirements that they are asking for. One of the special uh, characteristics of this scholarship is that it also supports women that have to travel with their children. Um, so if you are a mother, please do not hesitate in applying to the scholarship only because uh, you think that you would be unable to travel without your children. Um, we have taken that um, into account. So what are the main eligibility criteria? I would like to go quickly through them. <clears throat> First of all, um, one of them is that you have to be a woman in order to apply. You have to be a passport holder and also a permanent resident to one of the countries that this scholarship is available in. Um, uh, you have to apply to one of the programs that have been included in this master's, uh, in, in the scholarship, uh, and one of the universities that is participating for the region for, you, for which you are coming from. That we'll go and see them closely now for the Americas. Um, and have an undergrad in one of the STEM areas uh, required in order for you to do the master's degree that you have chosen. Slide, please. Um, another requirement is that you couldn't have, have lived in the UK or studied a degree, uh, a degree in the UK before. Um, you also need to meet the English requirement that the university needs for you to be able to successfully do the master's degree that you have chosen. And uh, you will have to show uh, and evidence that would um, be able to support your need of, um, of economical or financial need in order to be able to pursue the studies. Uh, basically, that you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to do those kinds of studies if you wouldn't be supported by a scholarship like the ones that, that, that we are offering today. And we also are requiring people to return to their home countries to be able to continue being an ambassador, not only to the British Council Scholarship, but also an ambassador to uh, promote women in, and girls to pursue STEM uh, careers. Um, you are not eligible um, to apply for the scholarship if you already have the British, the British citizenship and also if you're an employee or former employee or relative uh, from Her Majesty's uh, government or also from the British Council. Um, you wouldn't be eligible if you have also been given financial support from any other uh, scholarship to study in the UK already. Or, as I mentioned before, if you have previously already studied in the UK um, with UK uh, financial support. I would like to give a little bit of more details regarding uh, the characteristics of the scholarship here in the American region. First of all, uh, in order to apply, you have to be a permanent resident and have um, the citizenship of one of the following countries, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Cuba, Jamaica, Mexico, 
Peru and Venezuela. This is a very important um, an important part in order for you to apply. And uh, if you are from any of those countries, you just have to make sure that you are uh, you are applying to one of the eight universities that are participating in the Americas. That is Imperial College London, Bangor University, Cranfield University, Durham University, Robert Gordon University, University of York, University of Bristol, and uh, University of Wolverhampton. So a little bit more of details of how to apply. Um, it is very important to visit our website. Uh, in our website, you will be able to find information, general information from the scholarship, as also the links to each one of the universities and contact information for you to apply. Um, I would like to highlight that one of the important things that you have to look out for is the closing date because each university has their own closing date and even some of them have more than one closing date depending on the program that you're interested in applying to. Um, so that's why it is very important to go and look at the university's websites and check as well for the requirements that each one of them may have. Um, today, we will be having two universities with us, the University of Bristol and the University of Wolverhampton. But um, in the next slide, here you can see uh, the sessions that we're going to have uh, on the, uh, during this week. So yesterday, we had Imperial College London and Bangor University giving more information about the courses and the requirements that they are asking for. And if you wish to see uh, the video that we recorded, you can find it up, you can find it in our British Council Americas website. Um, that The link is on your screen right now. And um, in the section related to events, you can see the live session from yesterday, which will give you more information. The session that you're looking at right now will also be available on that website uh, probably tomorrow. And by the end of the week, you will be able to have all four webinars up there if you're also interested in other universities. Um, that is all from my side for the time being. Before I present the universities, I would like to remind you that any question, you can ask it directly. Uh, you can type it directly to us, and we will be addressing questions at the end of the webinar. So um, now I would like to leave you with the University of Bristol. Uh, with us today, we have Jenny French. She is the International Recruitment Officer for the university, and she's going to be giving us more details about uh, the scholarship at the University of Bristol. So thank you, Jenny, for being with us today. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm just going to share my screen um, so that you can watch the presentation uh, that I've got on today. So just hold on one moment while we sort the technicalities. So I just need to make sure that I've got There we go. Sorry, I've got a, a bit of a slow connection here. So we're going to share the presentation. So hopefully you will be able to see that for us. So my name is Jenny French and I'm from the University of Bristol. Um, and yeah, there's my presentation and it's got my email address on there. So if you do have any questions following this presentation, um, please do not hesitate to contact me. Um, but I know that we're on a limited time, so I want to get started um, and go through as much as I can uh, with you today. Now, I will only be able to give an overview, so um, please do email me or look on our website for further information. Um, I just can't cover everything today, but I'll give a, a brief overview about the university, the city and the courses. So firstly, I wanted to really um, make you aware that we have a number of virtual events coming up in March that are specifically aimed at postgraduate applicants such 
such as yourselves. So if you have a look on our website, which is listed on the screen, you will come up to the, the list of options available and they will have subject specific talks as well as um, opportunities to ask questions to our academics um, and also speak to some of our current students as well. So please, I really, really recommend that you sign up for those. But getting started, just to give you a bit of background um, and the rankings about our university, a bit of uh, context for you, I'll let you read what's on screen and give you a little bit more information um, as I speak. So we actually date back to 1876 um, and we are very proud to be the first higher education institute in England to admit women on an equal basis to men. Um, and currently women make up over half of our student and staff populations. So um, particularly relevant for the, for the women in STEM scholarship. And you can see some further rankings here. Uh, we're also linked to 13 Nobel Prize winners, including uh, our current Chancellor, Sir Paul Nurse, um, and Sir Winston Churchill, who was our Chancellor during the Second World War. And the city itself, so it is a fantastic place to live, work and study. It ap appeals to a, a huge range of groups. It's brimming with history, culture, adventure and humour. Um, and as you can see, it's won a range of fantastic accolades. And you can do a lot of virtual tours of a lot of um, the activities in Bristol online as well. But here's just a little glimpse of the city. Um, at the moment, it's not looking quite as bright as this because we are still in winter, sadly. Um, but we have really beautiful um, areas that you can explore that are very close to campus. So everything's very walkable. Um, and we have a number of museums. We've got a science museum. We've got a ship. We've got independent cinemas, restaurants, loads and loads of different things in the city. So you'll never, ever get bored. Um, and we all centre around this beautiful historical harbour side. And we actually have a festival to celebrate um, all things to do with the harbour side in the summer. It's a big city, but it's not too big. Um, so as I said, you can easily get around by walking or you can hire a bike or even we actually have e-scooters at the moment. Um, we were the first UK uh, cycling city back in 2008. So um, there are lots of lots of uh, cyclists in the city, which is a really fun and very cheap way to get around. So you're not having to use public transport. And just to give you a bit of context of exactly where we are, we are uh, the largest city in the southwest of England, less than an hour and a half from London. So really conveniently placed. Um, it's also a fantastic starting point to explore the rest of the UK and wider Europe if you wanted to. We have our own international airport, which is just a short bus journey away from campus. Um, and yeah, it's a really fantastic opportunity if you do get to come over here um, to explore some, some further places easily and quickly. So in terms of student life in Bristol, um, aside from your academic studies, there are so many things to get involved in, see and do. Uh, just one of them I'll pull out is that we host Europe's largest street art festival, um, Upfest. So you may know that we're very famous for um, being home to Banksy, the graffiti artist, um, who has done many pieces throughout the city. And you can do tours to look at those um, uh, whenever suits you. In terms of the university, we've got around about 27,000 students currently and around a third of those are from outside of the UK. So it's really multicultural. Um, they come from over 150 different countries, but we still have a really good staff to student ratio. So you'll still have lots of time um, with your academics on your course. We're very proud of our Global Lounge, which really celebrates our diversity and encourages students from all cultures to kind of make friends and we can all learn from each other. Um, so I've gone to a number of Global Lounge events back when we were um, able to be on campus um, and I learned about Indian dance, uh, Mexican uh, festival of the Day of the Dead, sorry. And even while we've been online, we've managed to continue having a language cafe where students have taught each other their own languages. And we've covered 16, including Russian, sign language, Korean. Um, and we've had over 300 students involved in that. So it's been a real success. So that's something that we're definitely very proud of at Bristol. And again, because you can't visit us at the moment, I'd really recommend you look at our virtual tour online where you can look at lots of different buildings and facilities and find out more and get a real feel for Bristol without actually coming to visit us so please do have a look at our website for that 
up. Like all universities, we do offer our own accommodation. Um, so postgraduates would be based very close to campus generally, um, and you'd have full 24 seven pastoral um, and security support. So you wouldn't be on your own. And it's a really fantastic, as you can see from the quote from Myra, it's a fantastic way to meet new people uh, and learn about their own traditions as well. And it is guaranteed for international students for on a one year masters, as long as you apply by our deadline, which I believe is the end of June. So I won't go too much into our um, our students union because we don't have a lot of time, but uh, safe to say we have one of the highest numbers of societies and sports clubs in the country and our students union building is one of the largest as well. It includes a swimming pool, an amazing event venue. Um, and yeah, so you'll definitely find lots of clubs and societies to get involved in and make friends and make sure that you're kind of enjoying yourself alongside your studies. But moving more into kind of the academic sphere now, um, we are one of the founding members of the Russell Group University, uh, which is a group of 24 leading UK universities that have a particular focus on world class research. And at Bristol specifically, we're really focused on finding solutions to the global challenges that we all face. So at the moment, that's very much the pandemic um, and, of course, climate change, things like that. And innovation is very much at the heart of everything that we do. So as you can see, our teachers are supported by the Bristol Institute for Teaching and Learning. This really promotes the latest in educational techniques and it means that our academics can deliver the best evidence-based teaching and you'll learn through challenging but enjoyable lectures, seminars, e-learning, tutorials, practicals, with access to our amazing high quality resources and facilities as well. Speaking of which, um, obviously we continually are investing millions of pounds into state-of-the-art equipment. Um, so for example, we've got one of the fastest and most advanced supercomputing facilities in the UK. We've got a range of different laboratories from low temperature environments, soundproof chambers, wind tunnels. Um, we even have an earthquake simulator. So there's lots and lots of um, things to support your studies. And a lot of them are available to students to use 24 hours a day at no extra cost. Um, and something I also like to mention is that we have a fantastic botanical gardens, um, which is an excellent day out, even if you're not studying um, and staff members can go for free. So I particularly enjoy that one. But yeah, there's a lot of facilities here. But quickly moving on to the qualifying programmes that we are offering with this scholarship, we have six within the Faculty of Science and Life Sciences. So just going into each one specifically. Um, so based within our School of Biological Science is the MSc Bioinformatics, and this has got an incredible research reputation, which is quite simply groundbreaking. Um, so, for example, our researchers found that fossilised pigments revealed the colour of dinosaurs, and this was named one of the top 10 scientific discoveries of the last decade. And similarly, last year, um, we were, Smithsonian named research um, around moths and the fact that they have acoustic cloaks that block the sonar waves that bats use, um, as one well as the top 10 scientific discoveries last year that is very likely to lead to exciting inventions that we may go on to use in everyday life. So potentially some sort of invisibility cloak or something. Um, so yeah, it's an interdisciplinary field, obviously, um, that involves a lot of big data. And on the left, you can see the topics that we cover. Um, and obviously you'll be learning and working uh, with our experts using state-of-the-art facilities. Um, and as you can see, one of the key skills that we cover is entrepreneurial skills. Um, and that's because the use of these computational tools in bioinformatics has really kind of shaken the foundations of the scientific disciplines. And it's led to the advent of lots of new technologies in the area. And they're central to companies as well as the public sector, and it's driven an emergence of innovative startups. So if you are entrepreneurially minded, so you may want to start your own business, you're, you couldn't be in a better place for it. Um, but if not, the job market for graduates proficient in this area is expanding very rapidly. So you will be attractive to a number of companies. But yeah, I will move on because we don't have much time, but um, you can always find out more on our website. So our Biomedical Sciences Research Masters is the next one that I'm going to talk to you about. And it attracts both biomedical science graduates that are interested in gaining a little bit more research experience, as well as those that maybe want 
to switch to biomedical science from a related discipline. And it brings together expertise from across many subject areas within this field. And it will provide you with the training in several key areas of current um, research interests. There's a very strong focus on experimental science and obviously like all of our teaching, very much research informed. You'll gain practical lab-based experience with access to specialist techniques in top facilities, including a virtual microscope and a human patient simulator. Um, so in the picture here, you can see our state-of-the-art teaching labs, and it is one of the largest in the country. And the, the building itself, the £57 million building, was designed specifically to help student and staff collaborate. So there's a lot of breakout spaces and a lot of kind of access to shared learning. Typically, the class sizes are quite small, so up to 25 students, which means that you're able to cultivate closer relationships with the lecturers and have, you know, great interactive seminars and discussions with your fellow students as well. So it's a really great option for you. And as you can see, we're ranked eighth in the UK for biological sciences. And moving on to the next two um, programmes that we offer, the MSc in Public Health and in Epidemiology. Um, so within this centre, we have a multidisciplinary approach and this contributes to significant healthcare improvements and policy changes around the world. So just one example of this that you may well be aware of is that uh, a little while ago, Peter Fleming, one of our professors, um, pioneered research into preventing cot deaths in babies. And this actually led to a huge campaign to ask them to sleep on their back rather than their front. And it's estimated that this has saved the lives of over 20,000 babies just in the UK and this advice has been um, has changed policies across the world so it really has been quite groundbreaking. We cover a range of policy topics including physical activity, nutrition, mental health, well-being uh, as well as infectious and non-infectious disease areas. And the MRC Integrative Epidemiology Unit at the University of Bristol, the IEU, it conducts some of the UK's most advanced population health science research. It uses genetics, population data and experimental interventions to look for the underlying causes of disease. Um, and since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak, members of this IEU have been engaging with research and discussion on the epidemiology and the public health responses um, within this challenge. Again, large, large staff numbers help us to be placed in the top 10% for staff student ratio um, in the complete university guide. And as you can see, public health has been ranked first in the UK for impact. So that's something that we're really proud of, that we can make a real difference with our research. And finally, we're moving to geographical sciences with our last two programmes associated with this scholarship. And I'll just let you read some of the information on the screen. But I just wanted to let you know that um, I supported a Mexican student um, who is about to graduate from the Environmental Policy and Management programme. And she just couldn't speak highly of it enough. She's continued to do such great work. And the main thing that she said she appreciated from coming to Bristol was just how involved her lecturers were in terms of worldwide research and environmental bodies. So for example, Dr. Jo House was her tutor and she's a huge name in the field. And she's part of the Intergovernmental Panel on Ch Climate Change, the IPCC. And she's just one of many staff that engage with policymakers, industry and non-profit organisations from a local to international levels. Um, so obviously the climate crisis is one of the kind of foremost global env environmental challenges and our MSc aims to equip you with the different skills and knowledge um, that it will take to try and address these issues, which is obviously a, a huge challenge. But we're continually ranked among the top UK departments for geography, um, and that means that we actually attract some of the largest portions of funding from national and international research councils as well. And I don't have time to show you the video here, but please do have a look on our website at the Cabot Institute. It will um, yeah, give you a really good insight into this area where we have a community of over 600 experts all aiming to um, help the environment and protect the environment. Um, and that's something that those two programmes have a very close link with. So quickly moving on, we have a, a, an office based in Mexico and our um, colleague David Thomas would be very happy to speak to you and support your application. We also have a number of well-established research links with several Latin America pro, uh, countries 
and we also have secured various scholarships and discounts. Please do have a look on our website for country specific information. I've given some broad um, entry requirements on this page, but you will need to check the specific program. Um, so please do feel free to email myself or even get in touch with David. And then very quickly, just to finish up, we have an excellent careers service at the University of Bristol, which will help you um, to prepare for when you graduate and want looking for work or even going into further research, maybe a PhD. Um, and we can help you with that. And also, if you wanted to maybe find some part time work during your studies, that would also be a great option for you. And of course, this is just one of many support services that we offer. The UK generally is a very supportive higher education culture. So you will not be on your own. It will become a home from home for you in no time. And there's lots of different places to reach out if you do need any support. Um, so that's everything from me. Um, I hope that's been helpful. That's my email address again and the link to our virtual Bristol pages. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening and I will pass back now. Thank you so much, Jenny, for that presentation. Um, as I mentioned before, this is going to be recorded so you can go back to check her email address if you need to send any specific question to the University of Bristol. Now I want to introduce uh, the University of Wolverhampton. Today we have with us uh, Narissa Anwar, which she is the International Recruitment Officer for the University. And we also have with us uh, Dr. Eva Navarro Lopez, and she is the, a reader in data science. So thank you very much for joining us today. Hi, everybody. Thank you, uh, Trinidad, for that. Um, thank you, everybody, as well, for joining us on this uh, Facebook Live event. Um, so I've got a very quick presentation that I'm going to run through. Um, so hopefully you can see all of that. Um, so next slide, please. Um, there we go. So the University of Wolverhampton is uh, situated in the West Midlands. Um, so that's right in the heart of the UK. Um, and we are a very well connected university. So the city of Wolverhampton itself um, has its own train station. So you can get to nearby cities very quickly. Birmingham uh, is just 18 minutes away. Uh, Birmingham is the second largest city in the UK and is also the youngest city in the UK. Um, so that's great um, for those of you who may be traveling with children or families because there are many family attractions nearby. Um, and also areas of great natural beauty, which you can explore. Um, but you can see as well from the slide that it's very easy to travel uh, to explore other areas of Europe um, because Birmingham has its own international airport and that's just a 25 minute drive uh, from Wolverhampton. The university itself has four main campuses. So the city campus in Wolverhampton, the Walsall campus, which is the home of sport and performing arts. Um, and it's also home to uh, the UK's British judo team and many um, international and national Olympic athletes use our Walsall campus to train. Um, so uh, for example, the Wales team will be training for the Commonwealth Games that are coming up. Uh, the Telford Innovation Campus, so there's been heavy investment, over £10 million of investment into engineering facilities. And then our brand new Springfield Campus, so this is a £100 million uh, centre of excellence for construction and the built environment. And this is actually the largest um, purpose-built campus for teaching around architecture and the built environment in the whole of Europe. Um, now, obviously you can't see our excellent state of the art facilities at the moment, but what I would encourage you to do is to go on our website um, because we've got virtual tours available and we've also got a YouTube channel. So there's lots of free videos uh, where you can see these facilities for yourself. Uh, next slide, please.
So just a little bit more about us. Um, so we have got 18 research institutes, which not a lot of people know about, um, but 85% of that research has been nominated as world leading or recognized as internationally important. And that's from the latest research excellent framework. Uh, we have a large student body, so over 21,000 students from 130 different countries. Um, and we are very proud of our graduate employability rate. So that's 96% with 74% of graduates in managerial or professional roles. Um, and for postgraduates, this is even higher. So that's 98% um, and that's based on 2018 figures. And I will talk a little bit uh, later in the presentation about how we support you with your career journey. Next slide, please. Um, so this is just a little bit of a summary of why students uh, like to study with us. So many of our courses are professionally accredited. Um, we've received a silver award for teaching um, and we have also four QS stars in the international rankings uh, with the highest five stars for teaching, inclusivity uh, and employability. Next slide, please. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. Uh, there's just a few other things that I wanted to highlight. So we have invested heavily in the student experience. So over 250 million pounds of investment into our facilities and the digital infrastructure for students over the last five years. Um, another great thing about Wolverhampton, in addition to our Springfield campus, is that we will uh, be seeing the opening of a new cyber quarter. So this is the Midland Centre for Cybersecurity in Hereford. And this will be home to the UK's leading centre of excellence in cyber security. Uh, so some really great facilities for those of you who are looking to apply for either cyber security or one of our courses in either BIM or project management. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, many of you, because I, I can see some of the comments from um, uh, students who have already tried to contact me. Um, I have been on leave, so Olga, I will uh, reply back to your email. I have seen it. Uh, we've got a very useful website. It's got all the essential information that you need about the scholarship. So I would encourage you to look at that first and to read the guidance. Um, next slide, please. Um, so on our website, you can find out in depth about the courses that are part of the scholarship, um, our research achievements and also the academic profiles. So many of our academics bring extensive research and industry knowledge with them. So what I want to focus on is how we support you as students to make sure that you get the best out of your international experience. Because we know for many of you, you will uh, be leaving everything that you know behind to come study in a different country. Um, so we offer extensive students support um, so a lot of that is listed on the slide um, things that I want to highlight is uh, there is free mental health support available to you um, so either that's face-to-face -face counseling if you need it but also remote uh, through our mental health support platform um, but also the student support team will offer advice and guidance around funding financial support if any of you are applying and you have uh, disabilities we have our own chaplaincy service on site um, as well so if you want to drop in at, at lunchtime that's completely free um, we also offer a free shuttle service for students between campuses. So our Walsall campus is home as sport. So it has its own swimming pool, athletics courts, um, badminton and tennis courts. So many students who uh, study at our city campus hop on to one of our free buses um, and go and take uh, free classes in the evening um, and then come back to um, Wolverhampton. So that's, that's all free for you and it's included. Um, 
Um, we also have ongoing English language support for those of you who need it. Um, and then we have a specialist skills team. So they focus on academic support. So if you need support on how to um, submit um, an assessment or you're working on a project, um, and they also support with digital skills as well as math support, because we know many of our STEM courses especially have a high maths content. We have our own students union, so you can see at the bottom some of our students from the Americas. And we also have videos on our YouTube where you can hear directly from um, students who have applied to us from the Americas. Um, but you can see as well some of the societies that we have. So we have a Catholic and we also have um, our theatre uh, society, which is very popular with our students from uh, the Americas uh, because uh, you're all very creative uh, from what I've, I've discovered and you have a love for the arts. Um, so that's a little bit about how we, we support you. Um, and again, I would encourage you to take a look at our website to read about all of those um, in more uh, detail. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, very quickly, these are the courses that are covered under the scholarship. Now, I don't have time, unfortunately, to go through um, these courses in depth. I do have a special guest at the end. So Dr. Eva and Navarro Lopez will talk uh, very quickly about artificial intelligence uh, for you. But we do have a virtual open day coming up on the 6th of March. Uh, that is free. You can connect to it on your phone um, or on your laptop. So please do sign up for that because you can hear direct from the academics for these courses um, and you can hear from the subject experts as well as students who are studying on these courses. Next slide please. There we go. I think it's loading. Uh, so hopefully you'll see this in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly touch upon uh, the career support that's in place for you. So you can see some of the national and international employers that our careers team uh, work very hard to source graduate as well as networking and employability um, events and opportunities for you. Um, what I do want to point out is that even once you graduate, you still have access to dedicated support from our careers and graduate team for three years after you graduate. Uh, so for some of you who may be looking to um, further your current career, or maybe you are somebody who's taking time away to have a family or, or look after uh, parents, for example, um, or maybe you've been unemployed for a while, that career support is there. So there, there is coaching around CV workshops, assessments, etc., and how to um, really um, uh, advance in the career that you are looking for. Um, so next slide, please. Okay, okay, so very quickly, uh, all of this information is on our website again, but I've got lots of queries, so I just wanted to touch on a few things. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to apply for the course that you're interested in. So say that's public health, you need to apply for the public health programme. You then need to receive either a conditional or unconditional offer to study with us. So it's either, it doesn't need to be conditional, it can be either conditional or unconditional. And then you must submit the separate application form for the scholarship. And that's on our website. So you can look at the questions, you can prepare your answers in advance. Uh, Wolverhampton's deadline for applications is 12 noon UK time on the 14th of April. Applications must be completed in a full and also please um, the applications need to be completed in English too. Uh, next slide please. Okay, um, so again, I've got a lot of questions around what does the application look like? Uh, it's a pretty standard application, um, which is similar to most other UK universities. So you need to write a good personal statement, explain why you're interested in the course and why the university um, you will then need to have copies of your academic certificates and transcripts. We will need these translated uh, as well um, and also an academic reference. Now, if you if it's been a while since you've uh, completed your undergraduate degree or you've been away from academia, uh, we do consider uh, an employer reference as well. 
All entry requirements can be found on our website. So whether you're applying from Venezuela or Brazil or Jamaica, um, they are all there as well as our English language requirements. Um, now, again, a commonly asked question I can already see in the chat is, uh, you know, do, do we consider the IELTS? Um, yes, we do. For those of you who want to apply um, and also be considered for one of our pre-sessional um, programs uh, we will be looking for IELTS level 5.5 overall in order for you to be considered for the pre-sessional um, and if you are looking to apply directly then most of our courses are IELTS 6.0 overall but it does differ and again I would encourage you to look at the course web pages um, to double check the specific entry requirements for certain courses um, and next course uh, next page please so, yeah, okay, so um, accommodation is covered under the scholarship. We have our own accommodation or at all of our campuses. So um, you will be based at uh, the accommodation that is linked to where your course is taught. Um, our accommodation is very safe. There are many options. Um, it has a 24 hour security team. And as a student, you get discounted or um, membership to um, our athletics and sporting facilities at both Warsaw and City campus. And next slide, please. Okay, so uh, here is my contact information. Um, so again, uh, please do uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions. I am working through those as quickly as possible because we have received quite a high number of inquiries at the moment. Um, but also, please do take a look at our website as well. Now, I am, next slide, please. Now I am going to introduce to you uh, Dr. Eva Navarro Lopez, who is a reader in data science at the University of Wolverhampton. Um, and she's also the director of artificial intelligence and data science um, research lab at the university. And she's very kindly, very quickly going to speak in Spanish uh, about the course for you. Dr. Eva. Buenos dias. Buenos dias, America. Eh, gracias, Nerisa. Bueno, pues yo soy Eva y soy la nueva catedrática de Ciencia de Datos en la Escuela de, Computa de Matemáticas y de Computación de la Universidad de Wolverhampton. Y, y os invito a que, a que vengan al nuevo máster en, en Inteligencia Artificial. Eh, es un programa que está diseñado especialmente para gente que incluso no tenga... Eh, conocimientos en computación. Entonces, es súper interesante de ver cómo la gran diversidad que tenemos en las clases es la primera vez que veo a más mujeres que hombres en mis clases. Y, y bueno, eh, yo soy, dentro de este máster, soy profesora eh, en, dos, en dos cursos nuevos, que es, uno es el de ciencia de datos y el otro es el de métodos de investigación y estos cursos están basados en eh, los últimos avances de investigación eh, en estas áreas y entonces os voy a, os voy a eh, mover la mente y os voy a hacer pensar. Eh, también eh, se me ha olvidado decir al principio que muy orgullosamente formo parte de Tecnolatinas y de AI México tengo una gran experiencia, he trabajado en México y me siento mexicana de corazón. Entonces, eh, nos encantaría teneros, a mí me encantaría teneros en mi AIDAS, en mi nuevo laboratorio de investigación de inteligencia artificial y ciencia de datos. Y bueno, muchísimas gracias a todas por venir y quedo a vuestra disposición para cualquier duda. Si queréis comunicaros conmigo, eh, podéis contactar a Nerisa y entonces ella inmediatamente os contactará conmigo o buscadme en internet y ahí estaré. Eh, muchísimas gracias por venir y, y quedo a vuestra disposición para más preguntas. Thank you. I have finished. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eva and Arissa. Uh, it's been great having uh, the University of uh, Wolverhampton being able to give us more information of the scholarship and uh, the courses that are available at the university. We're going to open our Q&A now uh, because I know that there's been so many questions coming in in our chat box. 
I'm going to address some of the general questions and then um, I, I'm going to send some around to the universities as well. Um, so one of the questions um, that came in were, for example, is there if there's an age limit to apply, there's no age limit. So please do not make your age be any kind of impediment of applying. Um, there are some people that are mentioning that are going to be traveling with their children, as we mentioned before, that that is OK. Um, the conditions uh, or additional support that you might be receiving might be different from one country, from one university, sorry, to another, because it depends also on the living expenses and such uh, from the city that each university is in. Um, somebody asked, is the pre-sessional uh, course were covered? And the answer is yes. Everybody that is applying through the scholarship has available free of cost a pre-sessional English course if you require that. Um, I would like to um, also address some questions uh, to the universities. So for instance, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Mariana from Argentina that was uh, sending us through that she has already been accepted to conditionally to the University of Wolverhampton to the Wildlife Conservation Master. So taking that into account, um, maybe if both universities can briefly explain about conditional um, acceptance and also related if they would need to give the IELTS exam or an English exam before, or if it's possible um, to, is there other ways of measuring English uh, before they have been pre-selected as a candidate for the scholarship? considering the, the cost that the, the English exam have. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to start. So um, you can apply for the scholarship um, if you have either a conditional or an unconditional offer um, with the University of Bristol. Um, if you have a conditional offer, it means that you, we are holding a place for you, but it's not going to be made official until we you meet the conditions uh, listed in that offer. So it might be, for example, your English language certificate. So you can apply to the programme um, and to the scholarship before you have passed the English language level but you will need to submit um, a certificate that meets the required level, obviously in time for starting the course. Um, we won't be able to get started on your visa or anything like that until you have an unconditional offer. Um, so usually that would be in the summer sort of time. Um, so yeah, you can apply before you've actually met that level. Um, and I'm sure every university has got a list of all of the tests that we will accept in order to reach the required level. Um, but you can always email us if you're not quite sure. But yeah, we've got lots of different tests that we will accept. But IELTS is the most common one. Thank you. Narissa? Uh, yeah, so it's the same for Wolverhampton. So congratulations, I think it was Mariana, um, on your offer to study with us. So it's exactly um, how uh, Jenny has explained uh, very clearly. Um, so again, for Wolverhampton, you can apply uh, without having uh, your English language qualification, but we will need evidence of that before you start. Um, so if you're planning to take IELTS or TOEFL or whichever qualification it is, you just need to make sure that you've achieved that. And that will be one of the terms and conditions of your offer if you're made um, a, a conditional offer to study with us. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I also would like to go over the deadlines that several people are asking because deadlines depend on not only each university, but some courses also have different deadlines. Uh, so Jenny, maybe you could uh, give us a little bit more information regarding that. So the first deadline and the key deadline that you need to bear in mind is that for the scholarship. And so we are asking students to apply for this particular scholarship by the 12th of April. So it's just over a, about a month and a half away. Um, I think our programmes generally have deadlines that are beyond that. But obviously, if you want to have this scholarship, that's the that's the key deadline to be aiming for. So I'd really encourage people to start making their applications now. It is a straightforward um, in quite a quick process. Obviously, your personal statement is probably the thing that will take um, a little bit longer, but there, it's not a huge amount that you need to submit to make your 
programme application. Um, as we mentioned, you don't have to have your English language um, already. You basically need your personal statement and at least one academic reference, um, as well as a transcript. But yeah, that would probably be the main deadline to, to think about. And I did notice that someone asked um, in the questions if we have an application fee and we don't at the University of Bristol for these programmes. So you wouldn't have to pay um, an upfront free fee just to apply online. Fantastic. Thank you, Jenny. And Larissa, can you just re remind us of the deadline for University of Wolverhampton? Yeah. Um, so it's the 14th of April now. Obviously, you need to apply for the course first. So again, I would encourage you to make that application as quickly as possible because we need to uh, process your offer first. Once you're holding an offer, you can then apply for the scholarship. Um, obviously, um, put your application in for the course first, but think about your answers to your questions for the scholarship. Prepare um, for that scholarship application as well. Um, again, applications can be made through our website. It's free of charge as well at uh, Wolverhampton. Um, and again, it's just the, the 14th of April deadline. I know some universities have a, a separate deadline, so you need to apply for the course by a certain date, but we don't, so it does work on a rolling basis, but it's a very popular scholarship. So I would encourage you to apply as early as you can. Thank you. Then uh, a question for both universities. Um, uh, somebody, uh, Geraldine, was, was concerned that she doesn't have any work experience. So uh, usually in the masters that you are offering, do some of them require to have work experience or having already an undergrad uh, is fine to be accepted? So for Bristol, we don't generally ask for work experience. That's quite unusual. Um, but I'd really encourage that you look on the course listing page and every course listing page has a document called an admission statement. And that will really um, provide a lot of information on how we process applications and what you need to provide when you apply. And it will say here if we're expecting work experience. So Sometimes, uh, even if we don't require work experience, but if you have it, it's always a good thing to mention um, because it can work in your favour. It just shows um, an even broader interest in the subject area. But we will let you know on the course listing page if it's a requirement, but it is, it's unlikely in these programmes. Uh, yeah, for Wolverhampton, uh, work experience isn't a standard uh, requirement for the courses under the scholarship call. Obviously, if you've got um, industry experience, that's fantastic and you can expand on that in your personal statement. Um, but it, it's not a requirement at all. These courses are open to uh, students uh, from all backgrounds. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much. We have a very specific question that maybe Jenna, I'm not sure if you prefer them to send it to you specifically. It's regarding uh, the GCSE math certificate. I'm not sure if yeah, you Yeah, maybe just them. email me, Lorena. Um, that would be fine and I can go into details about that, but it probably won't won't be applicable in your in your case, but we can look at that specifically. Perfect. Um, is there any other closing remarks any of you wish to give? There's another, there's more questions, uh, but some of them I think are better if they can just send it directly to the universities if they're very specific. Uh, there's some questions regarding residents, um, people that are from one country but reside in another country of eligible countries. Um, I, I, those are, would be fine if you just send them out directly to the British Council. Uh, the, the British Council email is uk.scholarships at britishcouncil.org um, we're getting we're a little bit slow and answering some of them but i promise that in the next few days we will be up to date we have had hundreds of emails coming in um, so we will try to get uh, those answered as soon as possible but i would like to leave the floor to any of you if you have any closing remarks uh, before we finish this session for today I mean, I would just like to say thank you so much for um, involving us and hosting the session today and just really, really encourage um, all of the women watching to apply and make the most of this amazing scholarship opportunity. You know, things like this don't come up very often um, nowadays. So it's a really fantastic 
thing to get involved in. Um, and if you have any queries at all, we, we'd be very happy to help you. So you can always email us. But yeah, please don't let this opportunity go by. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, I, I want to echo i want to echo jenny's uh, sentiments there it's a very very special scholarship and the university of wolverhampton is is delighted to be part of that thank you for hosting us today and i just want to wish you all the very best about ai ai i'm sure uh very happy to yeah i will i will answer all of them i was seeing some questions in the chat so i will yeah uh, if you um, write so, to so, inside, your smart, i will answer anything about ai so <laughs> i can actually connect you with dr eva following this event and um so feel free to email both of us <laughs> thank Fantastic. you very much before closing just because i know that this question always comes up uh, asking if there's going to be another opportunity to apply or if this scholarship is going to be available next year there's no guarantee that this will be available next year or in two years time so please do not uh, miss the opportunity of applying this year uh, because even if this does come up again we can't guarantee which universities are going to be part of it so if your master's dream course is among them please do not let this opportunity go by uh, and contact us and we will support you to be able to apply and um, try to apply good two weeks or three weeks before the closing date uh, because there's a lot of paperwork uh, that has to go through and sometimes uh, just missing uh, uh, one document um, can make you miss uh, this, this fantastic uh, scholarship that we have available for all of you. So once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Eva Navarro, Narissa Anwar, and Jenny French to being here with us today. And um, please join us uh, to the other webinars that we're having this week with more information of other universities in the scholarship. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Adiós, adiós, adiós a todas.